Hudson from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping and today's quick tutorial on QuickBooks Online is regarding bank uh, feeds and things you should do before you start entering uh, and adding bank feeds. So what I always tell anyone I'm training or any bookkeeper who works for me is to go over to the top this gear icon right here, click it, and a couple things. Never have show suggested rules. Don't enable suggested categorization. Always show bank details and always copy bank detail to memo. This suggested rules has now ruined um, banking rules and you can't trust those anymore. It used to be something you could. So we'll probably also click on check number just in case there was one in here. Okay, so every time you come to banking, make sure you have these, okay? Next thing is you would be adding your transactions. I do not believe in matching and I do not, um, we're not, anyone that works at Hudson Valley Bookkeeping is not allowed to match because sometimes you match to the wrong one. It's good if you see a match because that means that you posted that and that you are actually doing real bookkeeping and not regurgitating the bank. So I would just go ahead and exclude all of these that you've matched, okay? Now a match won't show up if you already did a bank reconciliation in this time period. Another quick tip would be to always make sure your bank feeds are clear before you do a bank rec. Alright, so once again my main quick tip about bank feeds before you start is make sure that bank detail gets copied into the memo and that you show bank details. The reason why is if someone went in and they actually added this and it says A1 rental. See how it copied it right here to A1 rental? So I've actually seen things like Sunoco is the vendor name on this transaction. And let's say it said gas. Well, it's really would be like auto. Okay. And you say add. And what day is this? 212. So let me show you how I would figure out that that was mistakenly posted. Reports. Do a general ledger or a profit and loss that you popped. And I said it was 212. And there it is. See how this says Sunoco? But in my memo, I've got A1 rental. That's because that bank detail was carried over. And that way I can find out if something's getting posted wrong. I've actually seen this in clients, you know, people I'm training their files. They've created rules that have the wrong vendor name attached to a transaction. And these rules continue to perpetuate themselves. So all A1 rentals were named Sunoco. And maybe this is like a rental expense and they were all being coded to automobile. So that way, if you have that um, bank detail always being copied, you will be able to spot an error. The other thing I would say to make sure you do anytime you're adding transactions is make sure the vendor name gets added. That's another thing I see all the time is people adding this and they make this mistake. Let's see, gas and oil. So we'll say this is utilities. Okay and then they click add, but they haven't added a vendor. So if you wanted to run a report about how much you paid a vendor, you wouldn't be able to tell because you never added the vendor name. If I take over a file or someone hires me to fix the file, I will insist that all of these be fixed and that vendor names be added to everything. Okay, so see once again, see how this one, they say the name, and then there's this one. So none of these are actually correct because this one doesn't have a memo. And then the last one doesn't have the name, so you want both. Okay, all right, I hope that helps explain what you need to do when you first start with your bank feeds.